Hello and welcome to the Weekly Bowl, the news show that tells you everything you need to know to be a well-informed student and American in under five minutes. I'm Michael Sheets. And I'm Carly Hoyleman. Let's, Let's get, get started. started. For the second year in a row, all of the Founders Scholarship winners have one thing in common. They competed in high school speech and debate. Andrew Hepler, a 2014 recipient, believes that his experience with speech and debate gave him the confidence to participate in the Founders competition. Inoma Osakwe and Grace Lefebvre also credit much of their success in the Founders competition to their speech and debate background. In addition to their experience with speech and debate, there is one other thing that makes this year's winners unique. There are only three of them. Traditionally, four students are awarded the Founders Scholarship. However, this year, one of the students who had received the scholarship decided not to attend King's this fall. Due to the last minute decision, King's was unable to award the scholarship to another competitor and instead use the scholarship money to aid current student financial needs. Networking, it's that invaluable skill that every college student, regardless of major, has to master. In her latest piece for the EST, columnist Leah Troberst explores the mystifying science of professional networking. While many individuals perceive networking as a superficial game designed by extroverts for extroverts, Troberst explains that there are many styles of networking. Read her piece to learn how you can build your career and expand your connections in a way that is both personal and authentic. Visit EmpireStateTribune.com. According to the Wall Street Journal, a video was released last Saturday which depicted the beheading of British humanitarian worker David Haynes by Islamic State militants. The dialogue of the video described the execution as the responsibility of David Cameron and the United Kingdom and declared that Cameron was following, quote, a trend amongst our British prime ministers who can't find the courage to say no to the Americans. This atrocity comes days after Mr. Cameron joined President Obama in strategizing to attack and reverse the growth of ISIL. Although there has not been a congressional declaration of war, the White House and Pentagon announced last Friday that the U.S. is now at war with ISIL. President Obama authorized the start of airstrikes in Syria and Iraq. David Haynes is the third man to be publicly executed by ISIL, following the slaying of American journalists James Foley and Stephen Soltoff. Haynes began working as a humanitarian in 1999 to war refugees in both the Middle East and Africa, and he was taken hostage in March. The Empire State Tribune echoes the words of Prime Minister Cameron, who said, my heart goes out to the family of David Haynes, who have shown extraordinary courage and fortitude throughout this ordeal. Our train service between Brooklyn and Manhattan returned at 6 a.m. this past Monday morning. The train's connection between Manhattan and Brooklyn had been shut down since 2012 Hurricane Sandy damaged tracks and signals. Governor Andrew Cuomo and MTA Chairman Tom Pendergast took part in a test drive this Sunday to verify that all signals worked. Not only was the train up and operating, but it was also running better than ever before. The train now has 11,000 feet of new tracks, three pumps which are capable of removing 1,900 gallons of water a minute, and a waterproof door in preparation for any future floods. The MTA's resiliency program is now working to fill more than 500 openings in Lower Manhattan so that, in case of any future storms, water won't do damage to the rails. And now, for the top five OATKC posts of the week. Imagine. John the Baptist in a green Speedo. That's the guy I met at Union Square. Student, if you could picture what the American family should look like, it would be the Brenbergs. Thank you, appreciate it. Student one, you look rough. Student two, oh really? I like to call this ratchet casual, but thanks anyway. A freshman. It seems to me that most of the important girls here are very short. Student one, who's this TA? Student two, Spencer Cashmanian. Spencer Cashmanian. Oh, I love his last name. It's like Kashmir and Tasmanian mixed together. So gentle, yet so fierce. Those are the headlines. Remember to follow the Empire State Tribune on Facebook and Twitter for more top stories. Signing off, I'm Carly Hoyleman. And I'm Michael Sheets. Thanks, Thanks for, for bearing, bearing the bull. bull. <clears throat> Where am I?